Good morning. So, we will talk about Herman Melville who lived between 1819 to 1891, the author of Moby Dick, his most well known works, but also the author of Billy Bird, Tippy, Omu, all these are nautical novels or stories about the seafarers. He also wrote a famous uh, short story or a novella, Bartleby the Scrivener. And then I am going to also talk about his reception and his legacy. Yeah, so, um, we have already done his Moby Dick and I thought it uh, quite relevant that we should be talking about the man and his other works as well and his everlasting legacy and how reception differs from age to age um, uh, about a work of uh, art or also about uh, the creator. So, um, his early life, so there was, he suffered a bout of scarlet fever in 1826, which uh, left him with a permanently weakened eyesight. He attended Albany Classical School in 1835 and in 1839, he shipped out as cabin boy on the merchant ship called St. Lawrence. In 1841, he sailed on the whaler. Akashnet, see these are all the names of his ships, Akashnet to the South Seas in June 1848, the Akashnet, A-C-U-S-H-N-E-T, it anchored in French Polynesia. Now, Melville's adventures here in French Polynesia became the subject of his very first novel that is Taipei in 1846. The voyage was unproductive and Melville joined an uprising that landed the mutineers in a Tahitian jail from which he escaped without difficulty. Following this, he roved through the islands, thus proving his bitterness against colonial and missionary debasement of the natives. So, the, his strong, staunch sympathy for the natives and this is also reflected in his, uh, in his novels and uh, you know Moby Dick and you know how he felt about those people. He was inspired by the plight of the Polynesians and wrote his second book Omu in 1847 based on these experiences. His Mardi uh, is uh, again a Polynesian romance published in 1849. Then in 1849 he came, he was very prolific. He wrote another novel in the same year, Red Burn, which is a pot boiler of, a, of sorts and is based on his first voyage to, London, uh, to England. He wrote White Jacket in 1850, which mingles his experiences in the Navy and uh, also his sharp protest against its brutality with increasing allegorical implications. So, we have seen Moby Dick and its allegories and how it all began. So, he was always interested in allegorical romances uh, with Mo uh, Moby Dick, he reached the epitome of it, of this genre, which is so specific to Melville. Later, he moved uh, to Massachusetts, where he became a friend of Nathaniel Hawthorne, the great writer uh, who wrote The Scarlet Letter. And then he, uh, it was that, uh, during this time that he started his work on Moby Dick. He also wrote Piazza Tales in 1857, which contained some of his finest short fiction, including uh, Benito Serrano, Bartleby the Scrivener and The Encantadus. So, these are the names or the titles of his um, stories from the Piazza Tales published in 1857. In 1866, he received a government appointment. He has been working towards it for a long time and then he began his uh, 10 years of service as a customs official in New York. He wrote a philosophical work called Clarel in 1876. At his death, he left the unpublished manuscript of uh, his novella Billy Budd which was published in 1924. His other important works are uh, some books of poem, John Marr and other sailors and also Timoleon and Timoleon was uh, published in 1891, John Marr was published in 1888. Talking about his style, you have already seen his style and 
uh, the characteristic features of Melville in Moby Dick. So, just to recap, he writes of adventures at sea, of other countries and cultures, which you see so much of in Moby Dick, of homely incidents and extraordinary events, all acutely observed and recounted with imagery in poetic language. His stories are presented in rich symbolism and challenge, easy explanation, he is not the easiest of all writers to understand. Um, allegory is his forte, the perfect vehicle for the artistic expression of Melville's preoccupation with the conflict between appearance and reality that underlies so much of human interaction. Melville's subjects are diverse, as you have already seen, particularly in Moby Dick, but his fundamental concern is with human nature and human relationships. For example, in Bartleby the Scrivener, he combines pathos and uh, humor to create an unforgettable tale or fable, where the stubbornness of an insignificant person can be read as uh, an act of existentialism. And then he writes uh, in his another uh, story, Poor Man's Pudding and Rich Man's Crumbs. Uh, it's, uh, they are companion pieces that reflect on the contradictions of human behavior and ambi ambivalences. Now, uh, we all recognize that today he is known as one of the greatest or accepted as one of the greatest of all, uh, American literature of all time, but he was the victim of contemporary misunderstanding, contemporary for his times. Both Taipei and Omu reflected a sympathy with pagan tribes that went beyond the romantic concept of the noble savage and was perceived to imply a certain contempt for western attitudes and practices. Moby Dick was also not well received because of its many complexities and metaphysical concerns. His work Peer was reviled for its psychological and moral tone and uh, uh, this was something, this was a thread that ran through all his works. Now, coming to Billy Bird, today it is regarded as a masterpiece. Melville sets his story in 1797 and depicts the tension of this period following the mutinies in the English fleet during the war with France. Billy Bird is a novella with metaphysical implications where the three central characters they acquire a sy symbolic significance. Here, Melville creates a tale of treachery, treasure, tragedy and betrayal. The, uh, all these, you know, this tale explores human relationships and the meaning of, the deeper meaning of life and the ultimate meaning of destiny. Talking about his legacy, he created America's greatest prose epic, Moby Dick, and today he is ranked as one of America's greatest novelists ever. And you have to remember his greatest contribution rem uh, remains uh, fashioning of the first great romance about the South Seas. So, these are some quick musings on Herman Melville as a writer par excellence. Thank you very much.